this is a Linux, so make sure you look in the instruction manual and it'll tell you um, what your settings are supposed to be at. So we're going to go over the combustion analyst um, analyzer and we're going to also go about uh, adjusting gas pressure if it's necessary. So first things first, turn on the furnace. You're going to need to let it run for about eight minutes before we do any testing. Uh, in the meantime, you can drill a hole up here. Now this one's straight, so it's okay. You want to basically keep it within the first 18 inches. Um, if there's an elbow or a 90, you want to do it after the 90, okay? And then you just put your cone in there, screw it in. When you're all done, just use a high temperature silicone to seal it up or replace the piece. In this case, we're going to replace this, uh, this 90 degree elbow uh, when we're done. Uh, it gets really hot, so make sure you're not touching anything. It will burn you, as well as the flue pipe it does get pretty hot, so just make sure it's not touching anything combustible. Uh, so we're going to let this run for another uh, about eight minutes, and then we'll go ahead and uh, make some adjustments. So this is the Test of 310 combustion analyzer. Uh, first thing we want to do is when we turn it on, it's going to give you a 30 second countdown. You want to turn it on outside in fresh air. Don't turn it on inside, go outside, turn it on, it'll give you a 30 second countdown, then you can bring it in. So right now we have it on uh, combustion mode. So you can see the little arrow right here, that's where you want it. Uh, this one right here, this is gonna be for your uh, ambient uh, CO reading, make sure there's no carbon monoxide, because this is also a carbon monoxide detector. This right here is just for uh, a draft reading, it takes temperatures. We're not really gonna use this too much, this is pretty much what we're worried about. This one here is def deferential pressure. So this has a built-in manometer and we'll go over that. So if you have to adjust the gas pressure, uh, you can use this instead of having to get another tool. And we'll go on how to set it up because there is some things you have to do to uh, change this thing to make it work. Probe here, you put it inside so it hits the back. And then you want to pull it back so it's about in the center. Tighten your screw so it doesn't go anywhere. Now, on here, you see it's got the start button. So what we want to do is we want to hit the start button. So when we hit start, it's going to start reading. You see this thing moving here? That's just indicating that the pump's running. And you'll feel it and hear it. Now, it's going to start high and then it's going to drop down. Now, you want to let it run for a little while until everything stabilizes. Now, if all your readings are good, uh, then you don't need to adjust the gas pressure. So, this is a Lennox two-stage, so you want to do all your testing on the first stage, low fire. If it's a single stage, it's fine to just do it there. So this is our O2, oxygen. This is our CO, we're at one part per million, so that's pretty good. And for this particular model, we want to be between uh, 7.6 uh, 7 and 7.8, so it's actually a little bit high. If we hit the down arrow, we can get additional information. So this is actually our efficiency of our system. This is an 80 percenter, so we're about 83.9. This should be right around the percentage of the efficiency for your furnace. All right, temperature differentials. So this is stuff that we're not really gonna be using too much. This is excess air. You don't need to know any about that stuff. And once you're all done, once your numbers have stabilized, you're just gonna hit stop. Now it's saved it. So when we go to print everything at the end, it's, it's gonna be on our printer. Um, so now when you wanna go to the next test, you hit this button here and it's gonna smooth the little arrow. And this is gonna be our uh, CO test. Now, um, it's the same thing with anything. You hit start to start the testing, you hit stop to record it. And then you would hit this again to do your draft testing. We'll go ahead and do it just because. So this is measuring the uh, temperature of the draft. It's also measuring the pressure. So it's kind of like a static pressure test but for the draft hood. And again, uh, this is just showing us a temperature. So we got 328 degrees coming out um, of the flue pipe. So once it's stabilized, we're going to hit stop. It saved it for the next test. And we hit this top key here and we switch over to differential pressure. Now you see how it says plug. This is where we're going to have to change up the system. So we're going to go ahead and pull this out. So on the head here, all right, so you're going to take out your particulate filter, and it's got a little uh, storage spot in here. 
and this is where your plug's going to be. You're going to actually stick this right in there and plug it up to switch it over to differential pressure mode. And then it's got a little storage space. You can just stuff that in there. And then, well, actually, it's not going to let us fit that. So we're going to go ahead and pop this back on. Give it a nice twist so it locks in. And now we can actually check our gas pressure. Now this comes with an extra hose, and what you're going to do here is we're going to use this to check our gas pressure. And one side is actually bigger than the other. And so the bigger side you're going to want to put on the tip. And you can see this is the first time I'm using this. You see this hose here is a little bit smaller, so this is the side that's going to go on the actual gas valve. So we take the larger sides and we're going to actually put it on the tip here and you want to make sure you cover the entire hole. Okay, just like that. Alright. And you're going to need one of these, which unfortunately doesn't come with it. And this is what's going to allow us to attach it to the gas valve. So basically you just put that in there like that. And you don't want to do this while this is running, because uh, otherwise you're going to have gas spew out. So make sure you turn it off and get set up first, then turn it back on. So we're going to go ahead and shut this off. And we're going to get set up. So. Okay, so you're going to need a 3 16 Allen wrench. This is our test port back here. I don't know if you can see that. It's very difficult. Now make sure you do this while it's off. Otherwise, gas will shoot out. And we're going to turn this uh, clockwise to pull it out. And it's a plug, so don't lose it. Okay, so we got our plug out. So we're going to take this guy right here. And then this is threaded the exact same way as the plug. And we're going to screw that into that hole there, into our test port. Okay, so we're all set up to check our gas pressure. Now again, you're going to want to look at your install manual under startup. Um, this is an SL280, it's a two-stage, so this is the uh, instruction manual you can find out on linuxpro.com. Um, here it tells me what our uh, gas pressure is supposed to be at, and it also tells us what our CO, um, what our CO percentage for natural gas is. Uh, so, this particular one for low fire or for high fire, it's a two point or three point two to three point six inches of water column for gas pressure on high fire, and one point three to one point seven inches of water column. Um, so it also shows us our CO, so we want to be between six point zero and seven point five. So we have our we have our um, analyzer set for differential pressure, so it's also a manometer. So now we're going to go ahead and hit the start. We've already switched out, uh, we've already taken the particulate filter out, and we already put in our plug, so we're going to hit start. And now it's going to count down and it's going to start taking a reading. Now it's going to fluctuate, so you got to let it run for a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and it's got a magnet on it, so it'll stick. And we got this all attached here like that. Okay, so we need to zero this out first. It's already running, so I just I took the tube off. We're going to hit the start button on it. It's going to count to five, and it's going to show zero. Now, once it's at zero, we're going to go ahead and put this on and start getting our reading. Make sure you cover up the hole. We are on low fire, so our gas pressure so this particular one is supposed to be at 1.7, so it's at 2.8-ish. So we may have to make an adjustment. So right here, this is going to be our adjustment. This is where we uh, um, where we adjust the gas pressure. So if you go counterclockwise, that's going to increase it. Counterclockwise uh, is going to decrease it. And you just use a standard uh, common screwdriver flathead for that. 
that. Mm -hmm. Now I know it says do not adjust, but uh, it's in the manufacturer um, instruction manual to go ahead and adjust it. So we're gonna go ahead and adjust it. So you just unscrew this like that. And whatever you do, don't lose the plug. And if you look inside, you can see it's just a uh, little common screw in there. So we want to bring our pressure down a little bit. So for this particular system, we want uh, one between 1.3 and 1.7. And we're at 2.13, so it's a little high. So we're going to go ahead, put it in there, and we're going to slowly turn it uh, clockwise to bring the pressure down. I'm sorry. Yeah, clockwise. There we go. The other way. And as you can see here, our pressure is dropping. Now, if this is ever at four and a half inches of water column or more, uh, we are told by the manufacturer to just replace the valve. That means it's faulty. So if you ever see anything at four inches of water column, uh, replace the gas valve. It's no good. So we want 1.7. So this is gonna bounce a little bit just because of the way it works. So you just get as close as you can. So we're gonna, we're gonna call that good. So now that we've made a change to the gas pressure, we're gonna have to recheck the combustion. Uh, to make sure that our CO levels are correct. Um, and they should be, because they were a little high, the gas pressure was a little high, so everything should uh, balance out. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, take all this off, and then uh, we'll fire it up again and take another reading. So once you get your numbers where you want, you just hit stop and it's gonna record it. Okay, so we gotta switch back to our um, combustion uh, analysis. Finally said it right. Uh, we put our particulate filter back in, took the plug out, put it in the little storage bin right there. So we're going to go ahead and put this back in here. Pull her back. And up screw. Okay, so as you can see, it saved our information from before. So we're going to hit start and it's going to override it. So here we go. Mm -hmm. And remember, it's going to start high and work its way down. So we want to get below... Uh, uh, eight uh, on our CO2. Uh, we're going to just let it run for a little bit. Yeah, so we want it to be between 6.0 and 7.5, uh, this number here, which it definitely is now. So we are good. We have made our adjustments. Everything's good. So we're going to hit stop. And now it's saved everything. Another thing we can do too is we can take this out and we can switch over to our ambient CO test. Same thing. This is going to look for carbon monoxide around the area. You want to hold it up like this, about, um, about chest level. And you would walk around the house while it's running to check. You also want to check this area as well. So we hit start. And we are reading zero parts per million. Well, one part per million, which is okay. We are in the garage right now, and there is a um, water heater right there. Basically, you just walk around the house. Make sure there's no uh, carbon monoxide going on. When you're all done, you hit stop. And now it's all recorded. So now that we're all done with that, we're going to grab our printer, make sure you turn it on, there's a little green light, and you want to hold it just like that, just like a TV remote. And then all you're going to do is you're going to hit the print button, and you just hold it like that, and it's going to print out all those readings that we took. And you want to get three copies of these. One copy we're going to put near the furnace, the other one we're going to put in our paperwork to the customer, and the other one we bring back to the uh, office so they can store it and it's going to show the date and all the information we took as you can see there 
And when you want to print additional copies, you just keep hitting the print button. So that one's done. We'll go ahead and rip it out. And then we hit the print button again and it'll print out another copy. And that's how you set up your ultra low NOx furnaces. This is a Lennox SL280, um, but they're pretty much the same thing. If it's going to be a uh, private label AC Pro, it's exactly the same thing. So. pressure don't forget to put this cap back on and definitely don't forget to put the plug back in because we don't want gas shooting all over the place <laughs>